Okay, we're recording again. So this is the last part of the question. You need to set, uh, you need to work out your second derivative and then set that equal to zero so that you can find the point of inflection. But to find the second derivative, you first need the first derivative, right? I've rewritten the function using uh, negative indices, so I've made all this to the power of minus 1, so that I can easily use the chain rule on it. So that minus 1 comes out the front. Okay, inside outside rule, so I'm doing the outside at the moment. That's differentiating the outside, then we're going to multiply it by the, by diff the derivative of the inside. Uh, so minus b comes down to the minus a b b to the minus b c. Right? You could say this equals. I've got two minuses multiplied together. I've got a positive. I've got an a, a b, and a c. A, b, c. This little beastie, e to the minus b t, and that's all multiplied. 1 plus a times the number e to the power of minus b2 all to the power of minus 2. This is like, or it is, one function times another function, right? I'm going to be thinking about that when I start on the second derivative. So we write second derivative. We need to take the derivative of u, multiply it by b, plus uh, u, function u, times the derivative of function b. What am I doing? I'm doing the product rule. Now I could have gone the quotient rule, but I didn't. If you want to do it with quotient rule, feel free because it won't change the final answer. So I've differentiated the u here, then I'm times it by b, one plus a e minus b t to the minus two plus u times the dv the derivative of v. So u is a b C e to the minus B T. Right. What's the derivative of this? Well I've got a chain rule here. I've got to do times minus two. One plus E E minus B T. That's all to the minus three. Right. And then I've got the inside. So it's times by that minus A B E to the minus B T. And now I'm going to do a little bit of tidying up. This thing in a fraction. Mm, yeah, let's do that. Whenever I've got minus powers, I think I'll put them in the denominators of fractions. Right? So we can just tidy this whole thing up. It's going in there. It's going in there. Right? So they're all going to end up on the bottom of fractions. Got minus a b squared c and e to the b t. Notice the minus power is gone because I've dealt with it by putting it into the denominator. And one plus a b to the minus b t. That's squared. Now, is that still a plus? I've got a minus times a minus, that's a plus, and that's a direct. So this is all plus. Right, we've got a 2. We've got an a times an a, that's an a squared. We've got a b times a b, that's a b squared. We've got a c. And everything else that's left will be in the denominator of this fraction. I've got an e, b, t. Got another one there, an e, b, t, and then I've also got 
that is becoming a bit of a familiar sort of expression. 1 plus a e to the minus bt minus to the power of 3. So I'm basically there with my second derivative. I'm going to write it at the top of the page. I'm not going to mess with it too much more. I could maybe take ABC out as a common factor. But I did this question last night. And I didn't bother going out. And we all did fine. All right, what have we got here? Just uh, let's have a look. We've got the same base. All right, we've got an e to the bt times an e to the bt. The base is the same. We're multiplying, so we can add those powers. A bt plus a bt is, that's right, two bts. Two bt. Top we've got two a squared b squared and c. Okay. Now I really need to make a bit of room on my page. There's no maxes or mins in the logistic function, so I'm going to get rid of first derivative. I'm just interested in the function and the second derivative. Okay, our next step is to find the point of inflection, and that's where the secondary root equals zero. But before we do that, this, we've got this fraction plus a fraction, and the first fraction is negative. And I want you to stop and think about, if this all equals zero, what could I do? What could be my strategies? And what you've probably been doing a lot, when you've had fractions this year, Give them a common denominator, and that would work the same thing. This, okay, how did we get the BD here? Let's turn this back D. How did we get BD on this side? Let's turn this back B. Right? And that goes to zero. Right. And this, this is my simple, it follows that. So this fraction plus this fraction equals zero, it follows that this fraction equals zero. And then it also follows that minus AB plus CB equals zero, because to make a fraction zero, you only need to worry about the numerator being zero. So you could say AD equals CB, right? By adding AD to both sides. But there is another way to deal with these. Right? You could start by adding that fraction to both sides. I could just make this my starting point and go C on D equals B. Right? Especially when I've got a negative fraction, it works pretty nicely, but even if I don't, if that was a plus, I could say C and D would equal minus A and D, but it's a minus, and I'm using a minus because there's a minus here. Right. Okay, now at this point, I can cross multiply. Again, it follows that. BC equals AD. And you can see that I've ended up at the same place. Okay, when I did it last night, I chose that second approach and it worked out quite nicely. So I'm going to subtract, this is all going to be equal to zero, right? And then we're going to, we're going to, sorry, add this fraction to both sides. So we could say the second derivative equals zero when a B squared C on B to the power of BT 1 plus A 
This is really where a whiteboard is so much easier. Getting my whingy pants on for a minute. But, um, I now understand why everyone who does maths videos on YouTube looks like they're writing in, you know, have the writing skills seven year old. It's because it's really hard. Right, so hopefully you followed that. <clears throat> there is an awful lot of cancelling that we can do at this point. Okay. So, where should we start? I don't know, at the start of the alphabet, A. If I divide both sides, okay. then let's divide both sides by B squared. Gone, gone. Divide both sides by C. Over here, this would all just be equal to one. We can multiply both sides by e to the power of bt. Get rid of that. This will now become a one. And, oh, oh, oh. That was originally squared, sorry. I forgot to keep the two. Right, but that will. Nonetheless, cancel out. This will go down to equal one. And what we're left with is something a lot um, neater. Two a on e to the b t one plus a e to the minus b t. It's only to the power. Therefore, right, this is all just one. Right? I don't need to write it as one and one, do I? I can just say that equals one. So let's times both sides uh, by this denominator here and then black and white. And we'll get e to the power of bt, one plus a b to the minus bt equals 2a. Alright, um, we're going to do a bit of uh, expanding here. Okay, I'm going to end up with e to the b c, right, that times 1 plus a times e to the minus b t times e to the b t. And that equals 2a. But what's happening? What is happening here? We've got the same base. E is the base. We're multiplying. So we add the powers. If you do minus bt plus bt, you just get 0. E to the power of 0 is 1. What that means is we've got e to the power of bt plus a times 1 equals 2a. 2a. Right? Minus a from both sides. We're going to get e to the bt equals a. Right? At this point, we are going to have to log. Okay. Both sides. 